Hey, it's me, Jen again, and today we're hearing from a provider of microwave ablation in Antalya, Turkey. We'll meet Dr. Bulent Cekic coming up. You are the first doctor I have spoken to who does microwave ablation. Yes. Is, yeah. is microwave ablation more common in your part of the world? 80% of the doctors or 90% of the doctors use radiofrequency ablation. Mm -hmm. And I begin to target ablation with radiofrequency ablation. My first 1,500 cases was with radiofrequency ablation. Uh, and microwave ablation is a new technique. Normally, we use it in liver cancer ablation or in kidney cancer ablation, then I uh, transform it to thyroid ablation because I have some problems with radiofrequency ablation in mm -hmm. some nodules like hemorrhagic nodules or in hypervascular nodules. Mm -hmm. It is not so enough. Therefore, I use thyroid microwave ablation and uh, I develop with a company, we develop the technique and uh, we learn it and sometimes we have a learning curve. Mm -hmm. uh, 200 cases. Now I have totally 3,200 case experience with microwave ablation, and mm -hmm. I do it not only in thyroid ablation. I do. I use it now in breast fibroadenomas. That is a lot of cases that you've done. I give many uh, webinars in Congress about the difference between microwave ablation and radiofrequency ablation. Mm -hmm. And I have every uh, month in my hospital, one workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, uh, I think, 15 workshops uh, in the past given. Mm -hmm. And there come uh, 40 international doctors to my workshop. Wow. And in one workshop, uh, I uh, give a presentation. It is mm -hmm. two hours. And then we do in every workshop 20 cases. Wow. 20 thyroid cases, not only thyroid, sometimes parathyroid cases, but mostly of them is parathyroid cases, 20 cases in every mm -hmm. workshop in one day. That's intensive. Yes. When you do yeah. the workshops, are those, uh, are you doing live patients? Yeah, live. Oh, 20 wow. Patients. Yeah, 20 wow. patients. I'm 52 years old uh, and I have the medicine degree before 25 years. Uh huh. I work as an intervention radiologist uh, like 20 years. I'm a professor at the field of intervention radiology, and I'm the chief of the department of Antalya Research and Training Hospital. Mm -hmm. It's the second biggest hospital in Turkey. And we have in my hospital 1,600 beds mm -hmm. and uh, 1,100 doctors. It's a very big and training hospital. Mm -hmm. And I begin to thyroid thermoablation, not only with microwave, I begin with, in the beginning with science, 2015. Mm -hmm. And I do it last uh, seven years, science seven years, I do thyroid thermoablation. Excellent. You know, RFA was only FDA cleared in the United States in 2018. Yeah, so yeah. I like that you have this experience that sort of predates what we have here in the United States. And um, hopefully here in the U.S. we're going to be catching up. <laughs> but right now we feel a little bit behind. Most of the patients that come to your clinic have very big nodules. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and mostly have a cosmetic, a bad cosmetic scores. And my average uh, treated nodule diameter was between 4 and 5 centimeters. Mm -hmm. And if I use radiofrequency ablation, uh, the ablation duration time is mostly 30 or 40 minu minutes. But in the same cases, if I use microwave, ablation duration time is only between 5 and 10 minutes. Yeah, microwave is very fast. Wow. Yeah, but microwave have some disadvantage. This is, we must, uh, in radiofrequency ablation, away from carbonization. In radiofrequency ablation, the machine, the dish, automatically stop if occur carbonization. But in microwave, doesn't. Microwave needs some experience to use it. Therefore, it is very important in microwave 
to use. And uh, in some cases uh, that have a very rich vascularity. In these cases, uh, is uh, radiofrequency ablation not so much effective? The patient come to me, I will treat it with radiofrequency ablation, but uh, we, the success rate is not so high in high vascularity nodules or in hemorrhagic nodules. And in these cases, uh, I begin to choose micro ablation I, to try. And, and then I see it is very effective. Then I uh, choose most the another uh, nodules. But uh, now I use only microwave ablation last two years. Do you know what the difference is as far as why microwave seems to be more effective in these nodules that are hemorrhagic yeah. or cystic? Is it the heat sink effect? Yeah, in radiofrequency ablation, we have heat sink effect, but in microwave not. And the second advantage is, in, as you know, in radiofrequency ablation, we use ground pads. And uh, the patients say to me, uh, if I give more higher watts, they have pain at the teeth or on the periauricular zone. Okay. But in microwave, we have no pain, less pain. And the second advantage is, in microwave, we can, while we use ground pads, the patient have an ionic current uh, electrical f- flow. Therefore, we cannot RF use in uh, pregnancy, pacemakers, or in metallic implants if right. the patient has. Mm-hmm. But microwave, you can use it because you don't use uh, ground pads. This mm-hmm. is the advantage of microwave. If I compare, there are some research papers in the literature, they compare the volume reduction rate, the shrinkage rate between microwave and uh, radiofrequency ablation. Mm-hmm. Beginning, uh, the shrinkage rate was better in radiofrequency ablation. In my cases, it was so too. In radiofrequency ablation, we use 50 watts or 40 watts mostly. I uh, use the same watts, but then I uh, detect that is too much to microwave. And therefore I use only now in microwave 20 or sometimes 30 watts. And if I use lower watts, the shrinking rates was more higher. Now I think the shrink, shrinking rate between radiofrequency ablation and, and microwave is the same. Do you use the same moving shot technique as you would with radio frequency? Yeah. Yes, the same moving shot. Uh, and the disadvantage of microwave ablation antennas is they are, are more thicker. Uh, the radiofrequency ablation antennas is between 17 and 19 gauge. Uh, but in uh, microwave, we have only 17 gauge antennas. Both are cooling antennas. It's very important. So would you say your technique when you're doing either procedure is the same or are there any differences? It's the same, moving shot, only with the moving shot. Mm-hmm. I learned the technique from uh, Mr. Baik. As you know, he is the Korean professor. He developed the moving shot technique. Mm-hmm. I only adapted this technique to microwave. I must say he's a very big uh, professor for me. I learned mostly from his research papers and from his presentations. Mm-hmm. I uh, used this technique in my hospital and then I uh, transfer this knowledge to microwave. Do you do the same type of local anesthesia as you would with a radio frequency? I only use local anesthesia. I don't give sedo analgesia. Mm-hmm. And uh, mostly of them have no pain. They have no pain at the needles that I give local anesthesia. The procedure, if I use microwave, uh, the patients don't feel pain. But uh, at the procedure that I give local anesthesia, the patient feels some very little pain. Mm. That's enough. I give, uh, I use mostly of lidocaine or pilocaine, and I give maximum 20 cc to the patients. Uh, in the beginning, I sent every patient to the NNT specialist to look to the vocal cords. Mm-hmm. But now, uh, in my hospital, we uh, develop a new technique. We look to the vocal cords with the ultrasound. Mm-hmm. It's very easy and non-invasive. And at the procedure, if we, I look every time at the procedure to the vocal cords with ultrasound that, uh, to avoid thermal damage. The first important step is a very good uh, anatomy knowledge about this very narrow area. I look in every case to nervous vagus because nervous vagus have some variations. And the middle sympathetic ganglion 
but in ultrasound, we cannot see the recurrent laryngeal nerve. We can't only see the danger triangle. Therefore, I use in every patient hydrodissection. I give between the vulnerable structures and the thyroid module, uh, dextrose or saline. As you know, you cannot use uh, saline in hydrodissection in RFAs because it is an ionic solution. Uh, but it is not important in microwave. In microwave, we can use uh, dextrose or uh, saline. Mm -hmm. And we have now a new research paper about this. We use hydrodissection. We give 20 or 40 cc, but it absorbs very fast. That's the problem at the ablation when, the, when we lose the hydrodissection area, the safe area. Therefore, we have now a new solution. We have now research uh, about this thing. We use Bolivan. It is normally a colloidal solution. We use it in emergency department in hypovolemic uh, shocks. Now we have uh, 100 cases. We try it in cases. We give only 20 cc Bolivan. It is a colloidal solution. And the hydrodissection area, the safe area, duration is 20 minutes. It's very important. And the maximum uh, duration time for me is in thyroid microwave ablation between five and 15 minutes. And therefore, this solution is enough for uh, safe ablation. Here are some cases that I do before, before and after. Uh, this is my hospital. Oh, where, wow. Uh, this is coast on, on the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, is very touristic places. And... Here are my workshops from different countries come and my webinars that I give. And these are, these are uh, my research papers that I, uh, I published in the international literature. And here are some advantages of radio frequency ablation. The antenna is more thinner. It's work according to the tissue impedance. It goes up to maximum of 800 ohms. And as you know, causes tissue covering is about 800 ohm. Therefore, radiofrequency, the most uh, advantages is it have a protective negative effect on carbonization. And we have in the world more experience. But here are the advantages of microwave. We have uh, higher temperatures in the ablation zone, larger ablated tissue volumes. And we have optimal heating in cystic nodules, hypervascular nodules, in toxic adenomas. And we have less pain during the procedure because we have no uh, ionic current passing through the body as an RFA. We have no heat sick effect. And therefore, in uh, microablation, we don't require the placement of grounding pens, pregnancy, pacemaker, joint prosthesis, and teeth implants. And uh, this is in my clinic, the follow form for the patients. I draw here the thyroid module and I described. And before the process, we uh, write here the nodule volume, nodule structure, nodule vascularity, the elastography value, the cosmetic score, symptom score, and the processing time. And the patients come to your clinic after the ablation in the first one month, three months, six months, and the one year. And we describe the difference uh, and the results of the ablations. This is what I do. This is a video clip of me, of my cases. I do, I give uh, before the ablation some lidocaine under the thyroid capsule. But as you see, the carotid artery is very close to the thyroid nodule. And the second step with the same needle, I give here dextrose and make here, here a hydrodissection. Here we do not only for thyroid uh, adenomas, we do it for parathyroid. And then here give I with the needle uh, dextrose and I make here, I separate it from the carotid artery. Then I navigate the needle under the parathyroid adenoma and I push here 20 and 30 cc dextrose because here are the recurrent laryngeal nerve cores. And now it is a very safe percent. I give more dextrose. And after that, I begin uh, ablation. This is uh, with RFA. It mm -hmm. is with RFA that I do. And now it is very small. Here is another case. In this case, I use microablation. This is a spongiform nodule. I gave local anesthesia under the thyroid capsule. 
And the second step is I give dextrose between carotid arteries and thyroid nodule. And then I begin of the posterior port of the uh, thyroid nodule. And if I see the bubbles, I move back. This is moving shot technique. And only in three, four, or five minutes, the procedure is finished. Wow. And here, this is a hypervascular nodule. Mm -hmm. It is a toxic adenoma. The patient comes to us with a very depressed thyroid stimulant hormone. She has problems. We ablate it in mostly in two or three minutes. After the ablation, we don't see any vascularization. And after two months, the thyroid stimulant hormone levels in the normal comes to the normal. These are from the literature uh, cases, not my cases, and you see the difference. This is my case. She have a right 90 cc spongiform nodule, and I use microwave. After three months, the volume reduction rate, the shrinkage rate, was 96 percent, and the end wow. volume 3.5. And you see the difference. She has no cosmetic defect. And this patient come from Nigeria to me, and she has a very big nodule. She has 156 cc. We use microwave ablation. And uh, but this ablation duration was 40 minutes because it was too big. And after four months, the shrinkage rate was 86. And that's the incredible. End, <laughs> yeah, and the end volume was 21. And I always share in every uh, webinars and presentation the advantage of thyroid ablation. We can use radio frequency ablation or microwave. Mm. But important is. The thyroid gland is in protected. It is very important. The patients do not need lifelong thyroid replacement therapy. It is very important. No incision scars on the skin. It is an outpatient procedure. I mostly discharge it after two hours my patients, and it is very minimal invasive. We use only local anesthesia. In very rare cases, we use sedoanalgesia, maybe in anxiety patients, but mostly I use local anesthesia. But the important thing of thyroid ablation is save your thyroid gland. It is very important. Absolutely. My experience is the mostly shrinkage is in the first three months. Mm -hmm. uh, when I call the patients in the first month is the shrinkage rate uh, 30% or 40%. But after uh, uh, three months, the shrinkage rate is uh, 70 or 80 percent uh, but in the last control in the sixth month it is 80 and 90 and we have now a new research paper my wife is a pathologic specialist of pathology and i make uh, in 30 cases in the if the patient come to my control i make a biopsy after ablation a true cut biopsy and i see uh, after ablation occurs coagulative necrosis but after three months occurs necrosis in the tissue. And if in the tissue occur necrosis, we have a very good shrinkage rate. Therefore, I, my expenses in the first three months mostly is of the shrinkage. And then in some papers I read the shrinkage uh, duration is in one year, but the most is in the first three months. That is amazing. And you mentioned... Um, a hot nodule as well, in, and that the TSH was normal again yeah, after a very great. short time. So this is a great procedure for people with hyperactive nodules as well. Yeah, and parathyroid adenomas, the same yes. thing. Yes. And in parathyroid adenomas is very simple to do. Only in one mi uh, minute you can ablate it. Wow. If you do, if you uh, do, but a good hydrodissection is very important. Sometimes in some countries the insurance don't pay mm -hmm. RFA or microwave. In my country, the Turkish government pay everything. Therefore, we have no problem with the cost. But then I am saying, okay, I, it is not, it have not economic advantage, but we don't remove the thyroid gland. If the patient remove the thyroid gland, the patient must go every month or every three months to endocrinologist. And this is a cost. The patient must go, must use medicaments. This is a cost. And if you calculated this, thyroid ablation is not expensive. Absolutely. 
Yes. And the quality of life of the patient is preserved. Well, I I would imagine that a lot of patients will be reaching out to you about microwave ablation in the near future, as there's a lot of excitement um, about this new, well, it's not new to you, but new to those of us here in the U.S. um, who are learning about it. And it's very exciting to hear how much success you've had with it. Thank you so much for telling me about your experience and sharing all of your success stories with me. It's been really interesting. Thank you very much.